What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must live label free. I'm super pumped. We have a very, very special guest. As you can see, she's very beautiful. Her name is Alina Timofeva. She is an associate partner, multi-award winning professional in cloud, data, and digital, a TEDx speaker, a mentor, and a podcaster. Alina, thank you for joining us today. I am super excited to talk to you. Your story is amazing. I was inspired. I was actually getting a little nervous before to jump on here. Can you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. So I'm Alina. I'm from Russia. And actually, I come from quite a simple background. So I was brought up by my grandmother to be a housewife and she didn't really have education. She didn't really, you know, see me as working in business. And to be honest, it wasn't just her. It was everybody in my surroundings seemed to be a housewife. So I didn't actually have, you know, a good example of who could be in business. And some time ago, seven years ago, I applied to 500 jobs in the UK. I got declined 497 times. And finally, I got three offers after about a year and a half of coming from Russia to UK and from UK to Russia. So I got an offer and I started as an analyst in Accenture doing technology consulting. Now, typically people in technology, there aren't many women. There is maybe equality like at the time when you enter, but not so much as you grow through the ranks. And I guess what's different around my story is that I grew quite fast because I got promoted like four times in four years. And I guess that's how I became an associate partner. So I spend a lot of time mentoring others and it's mainly women, but it's also immigrants because I do think that this is a very important topic, uh, just generally how you can be more confident, how can you see the role models, how can you, you know, move to another country and be successful. And these are just some of the things which I focus on. Well, I absolutely love it. So first question I have for you is how did that feel getting just rejected so many times? Because I know, for, I mean, nobody likes rejection, but you kept at it. 497 uh, declines is a lot to take. Yeah, I mean, generally, I was quite used to rejections by the time. So historically, when I was growing up, I didn't actually have much. And I was very keen, you know, to go and to try to see if there are any options. So I'm very good with taking opportunities when there are opportunities. I think what uh, made me keep going is everybody kept telling me it's impossible. It's impossible because I'm a foreigner. I'm a woman. I don't know anybody. You know, nobody needs Russian people in the UK doing technology for like graduate jobs. But also it's the work permit because the work permits are quite different for non-European people and the rules at the time changed as well. So essentially for me to find a job and for the job to sponsor me, um, I they need to prove they can find anybody in Europe and UK with the skill set and nobody really wants to do it for like a junior job, to be very honest. Yeah, I'm familiar with that process here in the U.S. So when I was uh, VP of um, business operations and key accounts, we, you know, we were trying to get some people from Canada actually come work for us. And that process to get that work visa is very intense. And uh, all you have to all the boxes you have to check. I was just like, ah, <laughs> so I'm sure on your side, you went through quite a bit. So you got a yes, finally, you accepted it and you just worked your up the ranks. I want to actually just touch really quick about being a woman in the IT industry. So I just came from that. I had an opportunity that I was very excited about. And as I got into the role and just tried to get into this, because it was a fairly new industry for me, but it was in sales, um, mm-hmm. and developing new accounts. It was, um, I've never really experienced that level of discrimination before. And I, I mean, I think that I'm pretty tough. I'm a type A like yourself, like total, like type A, you know, very aggressive. Like I really don't, not too much phases me, but I was really shocked at what I experienced in that industry specifically. Can you tell me or share with the audience um, how you were able to sidestep that discrimination as a woman and become successful? Yeah, so I guess when I joined, I wasn't super confident. And it wasn't just the fact that I'm a woman, it was also that I'm an immigrant and that I'm quite from a like simple background. So my confidence was shattered. Like the first year, I literally didn't fit in. I didn't fit in like into environment, into work class, into anything. And I think the first couple of years was very hard for me to actually grow. 
And I did try to get promoted quite quickly, but I was unsuccessful. And actually, I was quite uh, disappointed by that experience at the time. And the turning moment for me was, I think, after two, three years, I didn't get promoted. I also kind of broke up with my boyfriend at the time. And I was sitting, I was literally earning like not a lot. I was spending most of my money on rent. Yeah. And I realized that I need to do like something and change my mindset and keep going. Um, I mean, I didn't have any like major issues uh, in, in, in terms of, you know, people not wanting me in, in terms of getting promoting or sure. something like sure. that. But I think what I did experience is a couple of things. Number one, when I'm in the room, I'm typically the only woman and not always do people take me seriously in particular when I was younger and well I guess I was more junior in my roles so that was number one number two I mean people again because there are lots of men they do tend to flirt with you but they don't take you like as a serious digital leader or whoever else so again this has been becoming better because uh, well I've been growing but typically in most of my jobs uh, I work with men who are maybe 10 15 20 years older than me they are usually white males from UK and I'm like the only person woman who is an immigrant etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's quite fun and some people like it some people don't I think I'm okay but it took me some time that's well, congratulations on all that. I, I'm no longer in the industry. I was like, okay, I'm out, <laughs> which is fine. You know, it's, it's for the best. So um, you are a top rated TEDx speaker and it's called talk, but never fall, but never give up. So can you tell us about that, that speech and what brought you to that point where you wanted to be on the TEDx stage stage? Yeah, sure. So I wasn't into public speaking. I used to have a thought that, you know, all these TEDx speakers, such superb speakers, and it's very hard to get in a TED talk. And last year, or yeah, last year, I won an award and I was invited to Russia to speak in some big conference, but it was all on Zoom. And they invited me. There were different ministers of, I don't know, economy, the head of central bank, et cetera, et cetera. And I've never spoken in my life, right? So I was very, 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 very nervous. And they said that they invited 160,000 people. So I was thinking, oh my God, what are these 160,000 people going to think about me? So I turned up. Yeah, I know, but it was on Zoom, so you don't see these people. Oh, and uh, basically, they said, do like a TED talk and do it in Russian. And I haven't spoken Russian for like seven years. And basically, it wasn't like the best talk. Like, I was very nervous. I was speaking too, um, too, you know, too much, maybe. And I made a commitment myself after that talk that I'm going to do more public speaking I'm going to apply I'm going to do like a proper TED talk and it's going to be like great and I did start doing more public speaking nobody invited me to do a TED talk so I applied I applied to very many TED talks I got rejected or many people never came to me and came back to me so in the end I found this TED expert for it they accepted me they were excited and then I come on stage and my first uh sentences i'm a failure because it's about failures and how you don't give up and stuff and my microphone isn't working and like everybody's laughing because i'm like i'm definitely a failure because not even my microphone doesn't work but it worked out okay like there were a few challenges in terms of getting to the place like the trains were not coming and oh the God. carpet maybe if people watch the talk the carpet was like two times smaller than 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 typically they do on ted talks but i i was quite excited and then when it came out the views went up like very well and i was quite surprised about it what is good everyone this is your host deanna radalescu with label free podcast live your best life you must live label free can we get a round of applause today Woo! today i'm excited to announce manscape launched their ultra premium collection Believe it or not, it's for your not so private parts. I'm talking about a leveled up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. And let me tell you something, oh, it smells so good. My man wears this every day. This is an all-in-one skin and hair care kit for the everyday man and covers you from head to toe 
Manscaped is trusted below the waist. Now trust them with the rest. Join the four million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com and use the code LABELFREE20 for 20% off and free shipping and enjoy. What was the basis? I mean, I mean, I can tell by the title, but I want you to share with the with the audience the basis of your speech. Like, what yeah. was your... Yeah, so the idea was, part of it was based on my life story, but the key, key thing is like failure is an opportunity to grow. And it is different from normal talks on this topic because it's told from the story of an immigrant. So it has some funny moments and jokes in terms of how I felt when I came to UK, but also kind of some maybe last um, funny things like the reality of the failures and that you may feel bad and you may feel that you don't belong but you know you carry on and ultimately you come to some opportunities that's the thing so it's meant to be motivational and it's meant to be like nice and short from the immigrant perspective I love it so I, I completely agree with that mentality that message you know, I've I've done some things in my life that didn't exactly pan out the way that I wanted them to. And at first I felt like a failure, but then I looked at it like I'm not a failure. At least I tried. You know, I think that trying is half the battle in anything that you do in this life. And if you can go, you know, if it's a dream or a goal and you approach it with everything that you have and you actually pull the trigger to make it happen, you know, you ultimately won in taking that step for that, that step towards action. And so for me, I, I love, I love your message there with that because I think it's very important. So being an immigrant, uh, so my, my fiance is a, an immigrant from uh, Romania. You know, his parents came over here. He came here when he was eight. And, you know, I, I love his mother dearly. She doesn't really understand a lot of, you know, she's a little bit of a, um, you know, communication um, at, like issues there, but she's just adorable. And I listened to some of their stories, you know, coming over and how hard they worked and um, just to get to where they are today. And they're very successful. And I just love those kind of stories. So, I mean, you've really, so when you immigrated to the UK, how long did it take you to really get into a place of where you felt successful and where you didn't allow that label as an immigrant to kind of hold you back, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely took like three years. Just to give you a perspective, when I was in Russia, my first job was washing floors in McDonald's. So when I came to UK, I wasn't particularly the most confident person. And everybody around me went to like more fancy unis and had more fancy families. So I didn't really feel like I belonged. And I had just some personal challenges in terms of, you know, finding accommodation, uh, making sure that I feel, you know, comfortable, making sure that I can talk to people, making sure that I can make friends. Because culturally, Russian people are very straightforward yeah. and British people are very like sweet and uh, less straightforward. Very proper. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't fit in and I didn't quite know how to fit in because nobody in my family speaks English or, you know, went to UK or lived abroad or experienced this life in a corporate. So nobody could specifically tell me. So I just tried and tried something. And I think when I started, I was the only non-British person in my group of analysts. So it was maybe 100 people at that time. So everybody was like, ah, oh, this girl, she's like different, different, different. And they made a movie about me. I was a Russian spy and I was getting the secret information from an analyst and selling it to KGB. And <laughs> there were like these weird moments of the perception because it was not only my perception of the British people, which was probably different at the time, but also it's the British perception of me because they never saw Russian people and they saw like movies and all these news about, I don't know, Novi Chalk and some news about spies and stuff. Um, so I would definitely say three years till I got promoted the first time, then it kind of became better. Um, I changed my job. I got a boss who like didn't know all my prehistory, but he really believed in the fact that I was very good and I have the potential and I work hard and he gave me like some very good opportunities. So I became much more confident. That's awesome. I love hearing that, you know, that you just like de per determination, persistence, you kept your eye on the prize, you kept moving forward and um, now you are you know, you're a mentor now. I mean, I'm inspired. I was like, I told you, I was reading your story. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm, I'm a little nervous. She's like 
done, done so much. He's a total boss. I love my boss, babe. You guys are just totally, you're just amazing. You inspire others to do better. Um, so what's next for you? I mean, I'm very big on two things. I mean, one is making a difference in the industry. And I personally think that even though there is a lot of focus right now on women, women in business, women in technology, there are still not a lot done because I'm in my job right now and in digital, I'm the woman, there is my boss, she's a woman and that's pretty much it. Like there aren't like lots of women around. Um, and I think the second thing, it's also, you know, just the growth. I'm very passionate about digital. I'm very passionate like around innovation and how we can transform, whether it's banks or organizations. I personally focus on banks and it's kind of making sure that people treat innovation, not just as something special, but it becomes as part of VAU so that, you know, we can transform the life of the customers and the life of the clients, et cetera, et cetera. So, pretty big on it. I think with time, I became much more, let's say, much less selfish because originally when I came, it was a lot of like survival, like how yeah, do I pay sure. my rent and how do I pay my bills? I think now I'm more like, how do I give back and how can we build the people or the organizations or the banks or whatever it is? So I'm much more mindful about the growth and the growth, not just of the business per se, but also of the, well, people. Yeah. Maybe. So you, and you mentioned earlier, you are, you really want to empower women, especially immigrant women. And so how are you going about doing that and, and giving back, as you say, to, to women that fall in that category? Yeah. So I support a number of charities, but also quite a few people come to me through LinkedIn or wherever they can meet me. So I tend to do a lot of one-to-one -one, like mentoring sessions with whoever needs to or wants to. And people come with different thoughts, like sometimes they're immigrants, they're not women, sometimes they're immigrants, women, but typically the story is very similar. It's like they don't feel they will belong or they may have moved and they don't think they belong. So they don't actually know, you know, can they be successful? How can they be successful? What can they do to be successful? And a lot of it is just in your mind, really, because there is nothing that keeps you from being successful. It's just, you know, it's your perception. And when I came to UK, it was my perception that I'm a tier two immigrant from like a poor family and I've never seen business. That's why I can't be successful. But actually there are certain triggers when you start thinking differently, you become a bit more confident. And then, you know, you make some progress, you become more confident and then more confident. And then sometimes it takes more longer sometimes it happens like earlier but it's all about determination and just making sure that you keep going yes and not letting those labels that society likes to put on us hold you back you're definitely an example of someone that has uh, overcome and just really kind of just focused on your goal and you made it happen where can if someone anybody's listening where can someone reach out to you connect with you support you and kind of just um you know if they're interested in any help or one-on-one -on -one mentoring where can they find you yeah so the main channel for me is linkedin so it's just my name my surname and you will find me and I guess I do encourage people to watch my TED talk just because I think it's a good one. And uh, I've done different podcasts, but I think the TED talk is definitely a nice one. And that we can find on YouTube, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. You guys, I will put all those links in the show notes. So go ahead and check out uh, Alina's um, TED Talk. And if you are interested in what she's doing or want to learn more and how she can mentor you and just kind of keep a, keep an eye on this boss, babe, go, don't hesitate to go follow her on LinkedIn and, and stay tuned to what she has coming next because I feel like there's more coming for you. <laughs> um, before I let you go, because we're getting close to your time, I always like to ask my guests for any last words of wisdom or advice. So could be worldly or practical, whatever moves you, what would you like to share with us today? Yeah, so I personally really believe in the power of action and the key words would be, you know, don't wait for inspiration, just get up from your sofa and, you know, start doing something today. And you may not get it right the first moment, but, you know, keep trying and you will get there ultimately. It's all about, you know, the action and the positivity of your mindset. Boom. I think that's going to be like an audiogram. That was awesome. 
Well, thank you so much for being an incredible guest. I very much enjoyed the conversation. Keep us posted on any new projects that you have coming out. If you're going to do another TEDx talk or a, um, or, if, or if you come out with a book, I feel like you're going to be writing a book. <laughs> I, think, I, I feel like that's coming in your future, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm sure you touched someone's life out there that is going to change it for the better. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. Live your best life. You must label free. Please don't forget to comment, share, review, rate, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.